Development and Planning, and Jacques Thibault is going to be the presenter for that. So um, as I mentioned in our welcome this morning, Jacques is part of the Allinger Consulting Group, so one of the ones that plans the On the Podium program for Vancouver 2010, as well as they worked with, um, with Russia this last set of games. So again, a lot of experience, but uh, Jacques Thibault.
Like BC, uh, BC athletes are now 50% of Team Canada going to Worlds, which is a huge success. There's 49% of the coaching staff that's from BC also. And I see many of, well, I see a few of you guys here today, which hopefully during our round table can discuss who, how they got to be at this point and how they got to be selected to be, to, to be going to uh, Los Angeles in a few, uh, few years from now. So basically, the, what, what, in my opinion, we can uh, attribute this success there was definitely the performance expectations for everybody was that we were not going there just to, you know, have fun and stuff like this, but we were going there to perform. And we were thinking that dominating the competition was really a possibility. And basically, we set up a series of camp, and like, well, I'll talk more about it later, we set up a, a series of activity to reinforce these objectives all along, okay? Second part of it is the SOBC staff was totally committed to this. The board was committed, the staff was committed, they put money, time, like somebody was telling me 40 weekends of work out of 52 or something like that, by the staff to try to support basically this idea that we could perform at a very high level. Then we put also a, a monitoring system in place. Some of uh, the people here could also talk about it in the round table, but basically trying to follow, like personal best became very important for everybody. We wanted, like Derek was saying, you want to get better. No matter what you do, it doesn't matter. As long as you get better, that's what you want. So, but you need to know this. You know, somebody needs to keep track of that stuff. Uh, there was a, a, a slide that we didn't show today, but the, not only performance and personal best is good for the athletes, but they help. They're like, the amount of weight that people lost was amazing. Just the training, some people, like some example of 30 pounds and more, and people looking totally different after going through training like <coughs> this. Uh, the coaches was, of course, the, the key to all this thing. So basically what we, we try to do with the coaches is we try to have a system where coaches were progressing with the athletes. So the idea was, you come to, uh, let's say your club. I would come to your club or a team, a lender team would come to your club, and then you look at where you are with your athlete, and you say, okay, these guys are diving, but they're diving straight in the bottom of the pool, right, when they start. So you go, okay, maybe I can save you a couple seconds if you dive like this, and then what we would do is we would bring an expert swimmer that would work with the coaches, to see how to get to dive like that. So, and then they're getting really good at diving, then we say, okay, we're gonna do the flip turn. And then you just establish basically a series of skills that you need to do the sport properly, okay? So you come to a camp, you go back home after learning this with an expert, then you can practice in your own community. And of course, now that you know what you practice, you also decimate this information to the rest of the club and the rest of the kids and the other coaches. And basically the, the stats that Kerry was talking about before about how everybody was improving was basically through this system. So we were able to do that about every other month for track and field and for swimming. And once you start and you've done see the, the diving and you've done the flip turn, well, there's more to do after that. Then you start to do more training. So they were most people were just swimming once a week. Say, so, well, you know, like if you want to do, like, let's see if we can get another time where you can swim. And then the SOBC staff would help basically to set up, you know, the second time. Then by the end of two years of doing this, we had people basically that some of them were almost swimming every every day of the of the week. When they were ready to go perform for the the, the national game, they would shave their head. They would be like, <laughs> they look good. They looked like they were, they were athletes. Like, could have been Olympics, you know, generic Olympics. And these guys are like looking super good. They're swimming. They're not swimming where it takes a long time for them to go across. They look like, and they, they act, and they were really amazing. <coughs> so this is coming from the coach, basically working with the athletes and growing together, basically to, after two years, being at a, very high level with these guys. So it's possible if you start to use a system like this 
and to grow with your athlete. Uh, just talked about it, like the support from uh, the SOBC staff is very important. So you need you need more time for ice time, you need more track time, you need more. They basically are set up to help with all that stuff. And that was very, very important because you, you realize really quickly that if you're doing a sport one, one time per week, it, it's going to be really hard to get much better than where you are. Okay. And then the last thing we did that was quite interesting is we took, uh, like what we do like with Russia or with Canada, like you have to take advantage of home field advantage. That's a huge, huge thing. So knowing basically where you're going to sleep, knowing where you're going to perform, knowing the weather, you know, knowing how, which road you have to take and all that stuff makes a huge difference in being able to focus on what you have to do and not on any other things around you. So basically, uh, with the help of Kerry and Lois and the staff, there was this monstrous pre-summer game activity that took place three weeks before the games where the soccer guys were playing exhibition soccer games on the field where they were going to go. The bachi guy was doing the same field with the same. So at the end of the day, you had this really professional way of approaching special O instead of just whatever is going to happen. <laughs> but that, like, you know, special O is no different than, than any other sport. People that do whatever usually get whatever. Okay, so. That's, so this type of approach was really, really good. And I, I would say right now, we just touched the surface of this. Because, I mean, as a volunteer, you know, we just gave some time here and, and like, but the, the, the ability, oops, I, I'll pass on this one. But the, basically the ability to move forward, like we have moved virtual bass a lot, but compared to where kids can go, we all know they can go more than way higher than us. So in track and field, Quebec was really, really good. And you know, like, can we go to their level now for you know 2018? Of course we can. Can we go more than that? Of course we can, right? So the idea is to for us is is, is not to stop like we were successful, but that's only 50 percent. Right, right up into 99 percent or 100 percent. Like you can always be better, and then it, the idea for us is to keep the expectation even higher, and include more sport for the next for the year. So, so that's just a, a, an overview, so that people would understand the program that we started. Now for win, winter sport. So the idea again, the, the games are coming up in 2016, and our BC people are still waving. They still want to be, <coughs> they still want to dominate in sport. There's a major difference between summer and winter sport. Like winter sport in general, if you are <coughs> like in summer sport, if you are the best athlete, you know, and you go on the track, you're probably going to win. In winter sport, if you're the best athlete and you have the wrong skis or the wrong wax, or the wrong, you're not going to win. You're going to be finishing way, way behind. So there's this aspect of, of all this technology, the skate, the skis, the wax, all that stuff that, that plays a big role. So you, you kind of have to learn the sport before you can actually do the sport, which is very uh, different than, than summer. So. One of our big, example, our big objectives for the next couple of years is going to be to learn sport so that all the people that are going to go from BC to the games in the Finland will all be doing the sport that they're supposed to do. So I come from speed skating, so my speed skating people are right there, so you can talk to them to see if it's true or not. But basically, when we started with these guys, there was just a few people that could cross over. You know, people in the corner cross over. Most people would go slow on the ice like that. And then I was saying, okay, well, that's not speed skating. We're not sure what we're doing here, but that's, that's <laughs> not speed skating. <laughs> and then after that, I went a few times and we went to uh, alpine skiing. And it was the same thing, like lots of the kids are going and doing pizza, you know, like the, uh, going down the hill and going like, I just come back from Russia. Like, that's not alpine skiing, right? <laughs> And it was the same thing. We did the cross country, and you know, lots of the kids have their poles in the air, and they walk like this on the snow, and they're going like, "Okay, well, that's not cross country skiing." Right? Uh -huh. So, basically, I'm going to give you an example of what we're trying to do. 
and I'm going to use our speed skaters there. And basically, the next couple of years, our objective to go to Newfoundland and all crossing over, all doing parallel skiing, all doing cross country, would be an amazing thing. You do that, and that, that would be amazing. So the example of speed skating is um, the first time I, I, I saw the, the speed skaters, they were just skating after uh, the Jenner Club in Coquitlam. And basically the Jenner Club looked like they're speed skating and these guys looked like they're learning to skate, learning to walk on the ice and stuff like that. So there was about five skaters, four or five skaters on the special O side that actually could cross over really good, but they couldn't really do anything on the ice because the other one couldn't. So it was like kind of a dangerous situation where, so nobody really was getting the, their, their needs met, basically. So, they were, so basically what we had to do is we had to divide groups and change strategies so that basically you don't treat everybody the same. So the group that was really, really uh, having trouble with skating so we decided for these guys, okay, like, once you can, when you were able to cross over, then you can move on to the other group, and then the other group with, that could cross over, they were learning speed skating, but the other ones were basically just trying to get to learning the speed skating aspect of it. <coughs> and it was not easy at first, you know, everybody wants to be together, so we had to organize camps where everybody's together, but there's two things happening at once, or... I mean, it got to be, uh, like we had to be quite inventive. We didn't want to leave anybody behind, of course. So after a while, we decided, okay, we're well, not going anywhere with this. Nobody's learning anything. And then we decided instead that we would do um, inline skate skating. So we couldn't get enough ice time. We couldn't go anywhere with this. So we started to do inline skating with the idea that, cross your finger, maybe they're all going to be able to uh, learn and cross over. So after now, uh, maybe a year, like in line, maybe six months of inline skating, almost everybody's crossing over. And they're doing, like last practice I was there, the general club finished <coughs> and these guys go on the ice. It's almost the same, like it's really hard to see. It's not a, it's not a club, it's not a club versus special O anymore. It's like skating people on the ice. With, and I mean, it's really amazing, it's really nice to see. And, Maybe you can talk more with these, with our speed skating group later to the round table, but uh, that type of things. Now, basically, you've got maybe 20 people that are ready to start speed skating. So now they're passing, and they'll do starts, and they'll do uh, patterns, and they'll do all kinds of things. And uh, compared to where it was, it's, it's, it's where we want, what, it's where we, what we want for all the sports, basically, to be for Newfoundland, okay? So this is a speed skating session. So we're basically on, on, on the wheels, and basically they're learning, you know, not only to cross over this way, but crossing over the other way, going backwards, going. So the ability that you learn through doing all these things that are different are carrying on to the ice and making people more confident and making people also able to practice at home what they learn there. And then hopefully this is going to work. <coughs> so the, the more advanced kids were, inv were invited to come to, uh, to a camp for generic uh, skaters that were preparing for Canada Games. So this is one of the train, you know, that they do with their top group skating. And we have two of our guys in there. And you would never be able to know which one they are. As before, they could never have done something like that. Okay, so the idea that we have is that you learn a sport. Once you've learned a sport, then we want to integrate you to be able to do things like this and then keep progressing with you. Okay? So for the next, for the next um, uh, two years, I guess, before the game, like all snow sport, what we want to do is have three to four camp in quick su succession, starting right away as soon as we have snow. We want to be on snow right away and help basically and start the process as soon as possible. And basically that's with athletes and coach. 
the team sport, we will want to organize three to four camps between now and June, where we would, again, do the evaluation of where we are and what we can do better and bring in experts if we need, need be in order for us to progress. So come home, come to this camp, then you go back home and you do your stuff. And the speed and figure skating, just because there's ice all year, but they're in a different situation, and we'll just keep going with the same program as we have, where we, we have a camp every other month or so, then you can go back and practice, okay? Okay, for summer, basically we want to use the same type of approach as we've been using very successfully for uh, many, many years. Uh, before I was working for all the podium and doing all that stuff, I was manager of the Olympic Oval in Calgary. And we had this program, a speed skating program, where we started, we had no medals in 1988. And when, uh, we, when I finished with the program, we, we had 15, gold, 15 medals at the, at the Olympics in uh, Torino. And the program, the way it was, was basically four years before the Olympics, or like right now, four years before our next games. We try to be as inclusive as we can. We bring program, we bring new kids in, we bring new coaches in, like lots of you guys today. And the idea is now is not that we've got, it, and then we do that for two whole years, like that's where it's like lots of people are included. And as the games get closer, then you focus a little bit more on the people that are actually gonna go to the games. So the program gets a little bit more focused, okay? Instead of having camps every other month, now we'll have only two central camp for, for per, uh, per year, and then we will instead have experts going to, in regions instead of having people all coming at the same place at the same time, okay? And yeah, and uh, again, coaches are gonna be the, the, the key to, to the success, and instead of having only a few sports, we wanna do all the sports this time, okay? So basically, this is how it would work. At, at the top there, basically, whether it's written 2014, 2015, these are the new athletes coming in the system, let's say this year, right? And they, they come usually with the coaches. Whether it's written 2012, basically, it's the people that were already in the program since 2012. So lots of the like Tom here, like some of the people that are, have been you know, in our program for a while. These people that have been for two years already working on this would mentor the new people coming in the system just because they know what to do. They know that if you're coming and you're going diving straight to the bottom of the pool, they know what to do now with you, right, to get you to a certain level. Experts, who are like people like me, basically, would keep helping basically the people that have been there for two years to move to higher and higher and higher until we get to you know the same level as Russia or the top athletes in the world. So there's still lots of gap basically between where we are and what we can do in order to get better. But basically, this is a plan until 2022. So it's so we're we're here for a long time. But this basically has a progression where people that have been in the program become mentors. And we try to keep, again, the same thing going with learning with your athletes as they progress to higher and higher and higher level, okay? You can ask questions later or in the round table about it. Okay, and the last, last thing I want to talk about, and it's a little bit about, like I know like last year when we, Talk about domination and that we wanted to dominate, you know, and all that stuff. It was it was something that the, some people were kind of uh, not very very good with, and some people thought it was a good idea and all that stuff. Like any eye is always good, no doubt about it. But it's not necessarily like the spirit of what you're trying to do is we're not there obviously to beat other people or to right. The idea is is we're, we're performing against ourselves, and we always want to be better. So basically, we want to practice the sports like it's meant to be. So we don't want to go and, you know, doing pizzas and doing, like we, we, we do want to be good. And the athletes that we have can be, and they've shown that they can be. So we we're looking for joy, like laugh, help, and the sense of accomplishment is amazing. Like the, the 
or swimmers, track and field, or skaters. Like, it's amazing, basically, now the kids are saying, I want to skate more, I want to run more, I want to swim more, right? It's not like, they drive, basically, this thing. Okay, and we always want to be better than where we were. So that's what dominance, for me, means, okay? We aim high and we perform at that level. Aiming high is really important, really, really important. And we want to see these guys have amazing performances next at the next games that they are doing. So always personal best and always performing when it's time to perform. Okay. And this is one of my favorite co quote. So I don't know if you guys can read read that, but basically as an athlete, you know, you're not in competition with no one, really. You have no desires to play the game of being better than anyone. You're there just to be a better person and being better than you were yesterday. Okay? And I think that's the spirit that we want with, these, with this program. And we're there to make this happen for the kids. Okay? So if you have any questions, uh, I'll be around and then we can chat more about it. Thank you.